Welcome to this video. In this video I'm going to show you how to derive a kinematics equation using constant acceleration to solve for the final velocity in terms of initial velocity, acceleration, and as a function of position. Okay, so in this, in this example I'm going to uh, eliminate the parameter of time. And so we, we find that in, in physics, um, we don't always have to define things in terms of time. If we're talking about velocity, acceleration, usually there's a time in the equation, but I could define, any, find it, define it in terms of anything. As long as I have the correct parametric relationships to eliminate the parameter that I don't want, you can basically solve for anything that you want. Um, you can do it before you integrate, or you can do it, you can use the chain rule to, to get rid of the, the parameter that you don't want if you're doing a calculus base, or if we're just using algebra base right here, we can just start substituting in, in numbers. So I'm going to do algebra base first here. In the last video, I talked about a graphical way to solve an equation, algebra based and calculus based. All of these are appropriate depending upon the situation. So I'm going to start here by talking about uh, a base, talking with a basic equation that we just started with before, which was this: that the displacement, the displacement, is going to be v initial plus v final over 2 times the time. And we said that that is the function of the average velocity, right? I derived that in three different ways. I showed you three different ways to find that, right? But I want to go from here to here. In other words, I want to get rid of time as a parameter. I don't want it there, okay? So I have to find another relationship, another parametric equation that's going to help us eliminate that parameter. So the way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to basically define acceleration. Average acceleration is going to be final velocity over initial velocity over final time minus initial time. And from that, I'm going to basically tell you that that initial time is going to go away to zero. So I'm going to have this relationship right here. What I can do is I can solve for time okay, as a function of velocity and acceleration. So I'm going to get time equals final velocity minus initial velocity over acceleration. And this is the one that I'm going to uh, substitute into this equation here. So basically, once I've found this, okay, this is going to go into this equation. And now that I have that, I'm going to be able to rewrite this equation very simply. I'm going to rewrite it as this. The change of position or the displacement here is going to equal v initial plus v final over 2 times v final minus v initial over acceleration. Okay, So now I've eliminated the parameter of time. I've eliminated that parameter. That's what I wanted to do. What I'm going to start doing is rearranging this equation, grouping my terms. So I'm going to take this 2a, multiply it over here. So I'm going to have 2a delta x here is going to equal this group here that we're going to foil out in a minute. V initial plus v, which we can, it doesn't matter the order that we write that one, but this one does matter, v minus v final. So I'm going to go ahead now and FOIL out these terms. So I'm going to go ahead and take my first term here, FOIL it this way, my next term here, FOIL it this way. And when I do that, here I'm going to get V initial times V minus V initial squared plus V final squared um, minus V initial times V or V final and that's going to equal to a delta x. So I just kind of emphasize that as a foil to show you how this works here, okay? So these two are going to cancel out. I'm going to group my terms, right? So these are going to cancel out just completely because when I group these together, right, they just add out to zero, right? And basically, I'm going to solve now for my final velocity right here. I'm going to subtract over the initial velocity. So I'm going to say that when I, when I subtract this over, I'm basically going to say that v final squared equals v initial squared plus 2a delta x. And now I've defined my velocity, my final velocity, as a function of uh, position. And now it's, a, it's in terms of initial velocity, acceleration, and position. A couple of things I want to point out about this equation. First of all, just if I wanted to really uh, elaborate on this, I could say that I could solve for v. I could say that v 
as a function of position or displacement in this case, I can say position, doesn't matter because it's going to be final minus initial, is going to equal plus or minus the square root of v initial squared plus 2a delta x. And I just want to emphasize some, uh, two things here just before I finish this video out. The first one is this. When you have a velocity function, it's important. We don't always write as a function of whatever. In this case, it's a function of position. That's important. When we get into gravitation and we get into other uh, types of scenarios, especially like in fluid dynamics, we have a lot of velocity functions in terms of position, in terms of theta, in terms of time, in terms of radius, all different ways we can define it. Okay, so that's one thing. That this is a little bit unique because you're us you're used to seeing this as a function of time. The other thing is that you you're going to see this plus or minus here, and that's important because Depending upon the situation that you're in, you need to look at the problem and choose the correct sign here. If the, if the object is still moving forward, you need to choose the positive. If it's on its way back or on its way down in a parabola, you need to choose the negative if you're talking about y velocity, let's just say. So this is, this is an important point here that you don't always take the positive here. It's going to be positive or negative depending upon the situation. All right, that's all I've got for this video. In the next video, I'm going to solve for this equation uh, using calculus, and I'm going to eliminate the parameter using the chain rule. So check back for that video, and thanks for watching.